Storm's back, y'all. Let's talk about episode six, X-Men 97. So yeah, I recently checked out episode six, uh, Life Death Part Two. This is off of the first original Nintendo Life Death Part One, and this also ties back to episode two, Mutant Liberation Front. And originally, in that episode specifically, uh, Storm. Minor spoilers. I'm just gonna spoil some stuff, and I'm assuming that you guys have looked at that episode two. Spo- uh, Storm has her powers taken away. Um, she's shot by a mutant liberation front member with a specific gun that neutralizes mutant powers. And before I looked at X Men ninety seven, the show, I was having some doubts as far as whether I wanted to watch this show. One in particular because yes, it's not originally it is it's it is the X Men show that I've grown up in love, but there's been so much time that has passed and I wasn't sure Marvel will be able to knock it out of the park considering their track record so far leading up to the premiere of X-Men 97. But once I got over that initial <laughs> bitchness of like being scared of watching that show, I was more than pleasantly surprised. Um, and in particular, one of the things that I was holding out for prior to watching the show is because I knew some, from some of the promotions that Storm loses her powers and i was like jesus fucking christ are we are we really going to do this again take away another person's powers i know it was in the comments i know i know it happened in the comments but like we're using that to kind of like help advertise this new show and i was like jesus christ i i, I we did it with laura croft fine we we did it with wonder Woman, fine let's just let's do it with storm and um what i want to talk about specifically are my thoughts on the show um, life death part two my thoughts on storm and how she is how she's been treated um as a character over the years i'm not going to talk about her ancestry being linked to the second sorcerer supreme i'm not going to talk about her lovers you know i'm not going to talk about any of that stuff because there's more people on youtube that can explain that and delve into that at a, at a better pace than i ever could so what I want to talk about is my thoughts as a person of color, as a black man, watching Storm, all from the OG 90s X Men series up until X Men 97. And when I, when I immediately look at Storm, I'm, I'm immediately inspired, immediately inspired by her. When I look at her, she reminds me of, you know, my strong, beautiful sister, my strong, beautiful mother. A lot of the women in my life that have, you know, given me inspiration, given me strength, you know, and to see Storm from the comics move into, like, animation, even back in the day, was inspiring. But I've always noticed, and even in the comics when I've seen Storm and read read about her stories, I knew she was incredibly powerful. I knew she was a mega-level mutant. I knew she had... She had connections to to godhood and I knew there was more to storm than some of the writers were, were were portraying and a lot of the stories especially in the show I'm just going to focus on the show without getting without meandering back and forth especially in the show storm comes off as holier than thou the perfect black woman someone who's always there to support the team Someone's always there when you need another leader to lead the team. Someone who's always there to pick up the extra slack. Someone's always there to pull back wayward members and, and, and talk them off a ledge. Someone who's always there going into, into the sewers to face the Molochs. You know, she's just, she's just, she's just always there. And she explains this over the show. Having my powers taken away was almost like a blessing in disguise. You know, now I can, now I can be human. Maybe this is the right thing for me. I'm, I'm paraphrasing to some extent, but she's accepting the fact that she lost her powers. And 
I know some of you were like, I don't understand. I don't understand why this is so important. I don't understand why this episode is so important. As someone who is black and moves around the world with a different perspective than most, a perspective where you have to always, in your mind, remain the good one, you know, the one who's always doing everything right. And then when you do that one thing wrong, when you, when you make that one mistake or something happens, you get put <laughs> on the shelf of, I told you so's. I told you that person's one of them. They're just like everyone else. Like it's, it's, I, I may be sounding like insane and I'm not trying to sound that way. Um, but seeing the show kind of delve with the fact of not only not storm having imposter syndrome, but storm renouncing her powers for the sake of safety, for the sake of, you know, I'm just going to go along to get along. I, 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 I don't want to cause any waves. And for the fact that everyone in the X in the X-Men team has something they can connect to, they can go back to, you know, Wolverine has morph. <laughs> Cyclops has Jean Cray, Goblin Queen, um, <laughs> whoever he kind of really wants at the moment. Gambit mm, kind of sort of has Rogue, not really. Magneto has Rogue. Um, he has the team. He has, you know, Charles Xavier. Everyone has like a connection they can kind of draw their strength from. They can kind of reset. But Storm kind of mentions this. My powers were everything. I, I I existed singularly amongst my powers. I'm a great leader. I'm a great martial artist. I'm I'm a great uh you know teammate. But everything revolved around my connection to my powers. My connection to what made me storm. And for me to lose it, I don't have any connection to any one of you on this team except for you, Jean Grey. Jean Grey. And you know we're sisters. You know we we we've, we've you know, when you, when you left the team, I was kind of there to steer Cyclops and the rest of the team, you know, whole when, you know, I, I was there to stand 10 toes down with the team and make sure that everything was running smoothly. You know, I was doing your job to some extent without, you know, the other parts. And now that I don't have my powers, I'm looking at the team and I don't see my place in it. I don't see my place here. I'm not a mutant. I'm I'm just a human. And I'll talk about it briefly her relationship with Sto uh, with Forge and you know coming to grips that you know I I do care for people. I do care there is more to me than being Storm and maybe this is good enough for me. Maybe just being Aurora without the powers is good enough. Maybe you know I, I can avoid some of the conflict because every single monster and, and villain that I've taken down, that escalation has just come back 10, 20, 30 fold. And she kind of explains, she does explain this in the show, but it's the fact that maybe I just need to like step away and be comfortable being me. And then in the sec episode six, she meets with the adversary, uh, a, a demon like being in the in the personification of an owl the adversary puts all their energy onto storm and the shaman the, um, the adversary feeds off of negative energy feeds off of fear it grows stronger it eats it up and it pushes storm to kind of examine itself examine herself and the adversary even mentions in the episode i'm going to fix you i'm going to help you and it was true to form. The adversary did do that. And what the adversary's main purpose was, was to show a mirror to Storm. You have consistently discounted yourself. You have consistently, willingly gave up your place in the world. You refuse to live in the world. You're so scared to live in the world. You're so scared to embody and embrace your full potential, your full power. 
and, 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 and you do that for the sake of make sure that everyone else is okay. Make sure that no, no, nobody rocks the boat. Make sure that you don't lose control because you're the goddess of the weather. You're the, you're, you're a living goddess. And you're scared of that. You're scared of what that could bring. You were descended from magic royalty, and you're scared of that. And these are things that are not, that are not talked in the show. These are things that are internalized by Storm. And it hit different. It, it hit different. You know, I'm not saying like I'm, I'm a, a, a descent of ancient goddess or anything, or, you know, the, you know, I can control weather or anything. But like when I saw Storm struggle with like, it's just so easy to like just not speak up. It's so easy to not rock the boat, not push people too far because they may think you're this or that. And sometimes deferring some of the things that you want to do, sometimes deferring some of your dreams helps, it seemingly helps raise those around you because you feel that you're, you're, you're going to take too much. You're going to ask for too much. But that's that you're you're denying who you are. You're denying entirely who you are. You're living. You're living. You're walking through life. Half alive. And that's kind of like almost like the callback to like the title of this, the episode life death where Storm is not fully embracing the life Storm is not fr- fully embracing herself. And the fact that she lost her powers. It did not. The, it, half of it was because she was shot, but more so of it was because. She denied herself. She renounced herself. And I've seen a lot of women in my life give and 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 give and, give and, give and get a fraction back in return and decide. And I won't get on too much on this, but I decide, you know, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to dim my light. So that I can brighten yours, and I, I, I'm not. I don't want to p- paint a generalization. It just, I've seen this with my own eyes. I've I've experienced it. I've done this myself. And as a person of color, you may have done that. You may have experienced this. I'm not speaking for everyone who's black. I'm not speaking everyone who's who's a person of color. I'm just speaking, just without getting too generalized. Some of the undertones within this episode. Hit a little different, and I understand that some people are looking at the episode like you know, I, I'm I'm really not seeing like the importance. I mean, I understand like yeah, she she finally gets her powers back. She magically gets a weave and her clothing and stuff like that. But the magic is a part of her. Power is a part of her. Godhood is a power part of her. And Storm has never, especially in the show, she's always been like the backup singer, the background dancer. Even though she's no, more capable of doing a whole lot more, she's displayed this a whole lot more. She's actually sacrificed herself for Magneto. She was the first to do so out of everybody on the team. And she paid the price, but there's a reason why she paid that price. She had to learn that she's the only one that can save herself. There's no one else that can raise her up. There's no one else that can have her understand what it's like to be Storm, what it's like to be Aurora. What the, the, the amount of patience and power and precision and dignity that it takes to be her and beating Forge, having that time with him, you know, even though he kind of like hooked her, hooked and baited her into, you know, fighting the adversary, it was all to make sure that Storm understands everything about you, the best parts of you. The immense power, the beauty, all that lies within you. And you just have to acknowledge that. You just have to recognize that. And when in her worst moments, because she's she she she's a claustrophobic. In her in her almost her final moments when the after were just closing in on her and saying, like, just give into the fear, just give into the doubt, just give just give into the lie of who you want to be. And I'll give you that. I'll give you that lie so you can live that dream, that daydream. And Storm was like, no, I've been living that daydream all my life. I want to fully be 
who I was meant to be. And without getting into too much of it, she gets her powers back. And it's one of like the most beautiful scenes to, like to see. It, it was very empowering. You know, I, I, like when I see something really good, I get chills. And I got to appreciate the writer, Charlie Feldman. They really hit it out of the park with this one. Um, you know, I appreciate Bo DeMaio. I know there are some fractures of like who that individual is amongst the team, but Bo DeMaio, he, he gets it. He gets what the X-Men are truly about. He gets what they can be. And the X-Men are messy. You know, if, if you like the Avengers, that's all well and good. But the Avengers are, they don't hold a candle is what I'm trying to say uh, without, <laughs> I'm going to say some, some, some really off shit. They don't hold a candle to the, the X-Men. And this show just shows a tiny glimpse of the potential of what the X-Men saga, the mutant saga could be for Marvel and for Disney. And I hope and pray that the heads at Marvel not only let Bo DeMaio back in, I believe they did, but let him back in. Um, but give Bo DeMaio, give the members and team production, production team of the X-Men 97 full reigns and all the creative might and, and, and financial might to helm the mutant saga series because they, 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 they get it. They understand it. Yeah. That, that's all I got. I, I, I was mulling over how I wanted to discuss episode six. Like I, I have to say X-Men 97 is like one of the best shows that I've seen thus far next to fallout. I think in some ways and next to invincible, like season, season two of invincible. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's really edging up to the top spot. Um, with each new episode, um, it's getting better and better. And I know episode five was like God tier, but episode six hit different with me, it hit different with my sister. Um, because I recognized something and she recognized and they recognized something. And when, when it was on full display, I was finally happy to see storm be the storm that I meant to be in, in that classic suit. And long hair. I mean, I like I like the Mohawk too, but like, it felt good. <laughs> it felt really, really good that she's finally you know getting her time to shine. So, yeah. Um, sorry I was rambling a little bit. I'm trying to stay focused as much as possible. But uh, I'm really excited for X Men '97 and the, and the course it's going. I, I'm really, I'm real. I'm locked in every single week. A new episode comes in. You know, it, it's get, it's capturing that feeling of, you know, that Saturday morning when you were a little kid and you couldn't wait to see the the latest episode. You know, I'm getting that feeling again in my 40s. And it's was like, geez, dude, like, that's a great feeling. So um, I'm getting a lot of traction uh, online. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the comments. I just want to slow it down a little bit and say that, like, I appreciate everyone's opinion. Um, I welcome everyone's opinion. Um, Bring your passion, bring your opinions, bring your dialogue. But what I want to get kind of clear right now of how I want the direction of this channel is I want everyone to be civil to one another. I don't want to see any sexist, racist, homophobic shit in the comments. If it's there, I'm going to just remove it, you know, just point blank, period, because it's not it's not tolerated. I don't tolerate it in myself, in my everyday. And I, all of you are, are beautiful, intelligent, grown ass people that should be able to talk about, you know, movies and video games and shows in a civ civil discourse without, you know, going down a, a road that we, we don't need anymore. We don't need any more of that type of shit. All right. So for this channel right now, I, I, I thank you all for all your support, all your engagement. but. I, I implore you, I humbly ask you, please leave that high school shit back in high school. Okay. And you can, you, if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine. I mean, like it, 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 you are you. All right. But this is how the direction I, I want to see this channel grow. I want to see it grow in a positive way. And I know I cuss and stuff like that. And if you're turned off on that, yes, I, I, I I, you are free to unsubscribe as well. But when I'm passionate about something, sometimes I let that blue lightning fly. But in all honesty, 
please let's let's leave some of that that hatefulness um that bigotry back in high school and i'm not i'm not singly i'm not targeting any single person in my subscriber uh queue um i'm just saying if it happens to roll around your mind one day that yeah i'm just gonna you know type in this bullshit you know just let you know that i, I watch mostly every single comment and I'll just deal with it. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to, I don't want to sound like a, a teacher or a parent or anything like that. I really appreciate it. Um, that's all I'm going to say. I just want to get off my chest. And I felt this was the time. Okay. So yeah, that's all I got. Cabs out.